dear friends, this is a very good judgment delivered by Honorable Justice uh, Mr. Lakshmi Narayana. This judgment basically deals with Muslim marriage laws. The interim maintenance that is payable to the wife of a Muslim husband is the petition, the subject matter of the petition. Whether section 151 of Civil Procedure Code invoking the inherent jurisdiction is applicable. First of all, whether the uh, Muslim wife is entitled to interim maintenance. This is the question to be discussed, deliberated. Point one. Point number two, whether we can uh, invoke section 151 of uh, uh, CPC in a revision petition. This is a really an excellent judgment. Uh, it's totally 75 paragraphs and 37 pages were uh, is the judgment, but the way in which the lordships have taken the judgment, uh, with due respect to the councils uh, who appeared for the petitioner raising certain objections by way of uh, one, as per the Muslim law settled principle that uh, interim maintenance is not payable, to 151 jurisdiction is not applicable. These were the two on which uh, the other side raised the issue. But more than that, the way in which their lordships have uh, analyzed the entire Muslim law, the concept of in inherent jurisdiction, he took up various segments of this uh, Domestic Violence Act then uh, section 2, subsection 2 and subsection 4, the di differentiation of it, the Supreme Court judgments, they are referred to various other judgments by the other council and how to come over one by one. And then Muslim law, the personal law, the jurisprudence of Islamic law, those things were discussed. It's really a wonderful judgment, the way in which is analyzed, <clears throat> which we'll take up. But before we go into the subject, I would like to uh, bring to your kind notice, the Honorable Judge recently spoke on uh, the issues of jurisdiction, the issues of jurisdiction. Taking Ramayana, he was delivering a lecture uh, wherein the learned senior uh, counsel, Bhishma Pitamaha of our legal profession, uh, Parasaran uh, sir, uh, uh, linking Ramayana to adjudicating. There he analyzed it. What is jurisdiction? What is this concept of law of agency? He dealt it. I'm just taking a bit of it because I would like to analyze and read the judgment. It is very, very interesting for uh, students of law, first point, students of law, what is this Muslim law? It's highly confusing, you all know that. But the way in which he analyzed linking that civil procedure code using the inherent jurisdiction, how he justified the equity, a good conscience is the basis that drives the interim maintenance. A doctrine has been brought into focus. But let me go through that. Uh, understand, first we should know about this uh, Learned judge, Honorable Justice uh, Lakshmi is very young. I think he's around 42, 43. <clears throat> he was spending a lot of his, his knowledge is extraordinary. As a lawyer, I used to see him. But uh, he is basically acquired so much uh, extra, extensive knowledge on various facets of law is because he was the editor of a Madras Law Journal. And you can see the value that addition that creates to the entire jurisprudence of various segments of law. And apart from that, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a very, you know, dharmic person. 
That's what uh, most of my friends are the college juniors, not I can't say friends, uh, my colleagues uh, who are uh, national law school uh, outputs, they say is, it is, they are the, most of the Madras I quote, uh, are excellent judges, extraordinary knowledge, and their uh, willingness to look, exp expand and explore the new passives of uh, law. Now he explained, uh, I would like to say, I still remain ringing in my mind, I just heard a few minutes uh, of his lecture. What is jurisdiction? We have an international law, international law jurisprudence, an ismic uh, company, uh, uh, that judgment, where it is mentioned that when the judgment is delivered without jurisdiction, then it becomes non est. The Honorable Supreme Court in Muhammad Nu took that view. What constitutes having no jurisdiction? They have written it in detail if you see that judgment. Recently, it was applied in Wilkins Barrow's case, where that uh, release of the convicts uh, was nullified on that ground as perverse, non est order. He took it so you can remember as a student of law, Lord Ram uh, hits the Wali. Lord Ram hits Wali with his the powerful. Arrow. Brahmas, Astras, now Lord Ram, you know. Then Wali, you know that uh, uh, Wali has great power. When you come in front, he will uh, take over all your powers. So Sukri was always afraid that uh, the, the weapon, the bow, and this, uh, the Kodanda Pani, that is so powerful, it will create such a noise when you are trying to hit it. The Wali can just turn and then take away all your powers. Then what will happen? But you know, Lord Ram is so skilled person. In seconds, he will hit him behind. So Wali will ask him, what is your jewelry? Why did you punish me? Why did you kill me? I am a monkey. I am an animal. You are a king. And your kingdom is Ayodhya. I am the Raja for this Kishkinda, which is totally different. There is no enmity between our kingdoms. So what is your right to kill me? What is your jurisdiction to kill me? Because he is a king. Judge is also a king. But there is a doctrine of separation of powers. But in a kingdom and king and all autocracy, then your, your kingdom, you will have all together exercising this powers, justice. And so, Ram will say two things. Uh, now, Ayodhya is the uh, kingdom which controls the entire Bharatvarsh, Bharatkhand, which Ayodhya, this Kishkinda forms a part of it, point number one. And at present, uh, Ayodhya is ruled by Bharat and I am his agent. That is point number one. So, I get a right to enforce the law. When there is a illegality or anything is there, as the duty of the king to punish the persons indulging in the criminal acts. Two, what is the criminal act you have done? You have taken somebody's wife, your brother's wife, and drove your brother away. And then you are incarcerated her, which is totally unacceptable in Dharma Shastras. Therefore, you have done a mistake, one, that is punishable offense. Two, me as the judge, judge is going to give punishment um, and then that will be implemented by somebody. But here both are same, Lord. So, uh, Bharat would have done that and it is duty bound to do and uh, I have done it. That is how it was explained by uh, Lakshmi Narayan, Justice Lakshmi Narayan. But this case is worth listening, uh, reading, friends, these 75 paragraphs. What is this Muslim law? What is the concept of maintenance, interim maintenance payable to the wife? And uh, what is Domestic Violence Act? What are the various judgments 
and uh, not just the judgments, the tenets of Islam, uh, the pristine law of this thing, Hanifa school, step by step was analyzed. And I'm now going to the second part of my discussion. I'm going to uh, take the exact words uh, the Lordship used. This uh, first is he took up the discussion on the pristine Islamic law, which is called as the chosen pearl, explaining the fundamental principle of Islamic jurisprudence, that Hanifa school, where the concept of marriage, wife and children was discussed in para 23-24 of the judgment. Here, very beautifully analyze the difference in section 2-1 and 2-2, 2-1 and 2-4. So long as the marriage subsists between the husband and wife and the wife is separated, the husband is liable to pay the maintenance. That is the interpretation of this. The intention of legislature also distinguished between 226-2, 2-2 uh, and 2-4. Then the various judgments which debarred the uh, 151 cannot be applied for may payment of interim grant and maintenance. Was he crossed that uh, various judgments and he introduced a new doctrine of uh, equity, good conscience, etc. Then in para 29, he referred to Holy Prophet and the explanation by scholars on the payment of maintenance to the wife and children, even if the wife is not in relationship. Now that is a wife relationship subsists, but then she is not accessible to the husband. And Madras High Court Division Bench order was taken as the priority when the other states' uh, uh, judgments were uh, cited. And he used the new thing is that uh, the doctrine of socio-economic justice and the purposive interpretation supported by Catan of judgments on why we should invoke the inner jurisdiction under CPC was discussed. The role of the new doctrine has come into play. The role of justice, equity, and good conscience are relevant con for considering the matters of maintenance was discussed. And uh, Domestic Violence Act also has been brought in to justify because it's more like the judge made law. This is, uh, it is not a, this is only the councils must have given only very little input, sir. But because of the basic knowledge with which the judge is working, and this becomes very simple. Now, dear friends, I would like to uh, take the judgment delivered by their lordships. And uh, this is the, Finally, this is the judgment. Yes, 